Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel, Mind Library. Today, we are going to talk about the book, Surrounded by Bad Bosses and Lazy Employees by Thomas Erickson. This book discusses the common issues faced by employees in a workplace, where they are constantly surrounded by bad bosses and lazy co-workers. The book offers some insightful tips and strategies that can help employees to deal with such situations effectively. If you're looking for ways to improve your work environment and deal with difficult workplace situations, then you've come to the right place. I'm excited to share with you some helpful tips and insights from Surrounded by Bad Bosses and Lazy Employees by Thomas Erickson. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications, so you don't miss out on future videos. 1. Understanding the problem. In this chapter, Erickson explains that bad bosses and lazy employees come in different personalities, and identifies some common types. There are bosses who are control freaks, micromanagers, and toxic bosses. On the other hand, there are employees who are lazy, unmotivated, and uncooperative. A control freak boss is someone who wants to be involved in every aspect of their employee's work, to the point of micromanaging them. This can make employees feel frustrated and undervalued, as they are not given the opportunity to make decisions and be creative. Similarly, a lazy employee is someone who lacks the drive to do their job properly, leading to a decrease in productivity and morale among their colleagues. The point of this chapter is to help readers recognize the different types of bad bosses and lazy employees, and understand how their behaviors can impact the workplace. By understanding these behaviors, employees can take appropriate action to minimize their impact. 2. Coping with bad bosses. In this chapter, Erickson offers practical tips for dealing with bad bosses. He emphasizes the importance of effective communication, setting boundaries, and managing expectations. He suggests that employees should clearly communicate their concerns and suggest solutions in a calm and assertive manner. This can help to create a more constructive dialogue between the boss and the employee. To provide another example, setting boundaries with a micromanaging boss can involve telling them that you need space to complete tasks on your own, and asking for specific guidelines on what needs to be done. This can help to reduce the boss's need to control every aspect of the employee's work. The point of this chapter is to provide employees with strategies to cope with bad bosses, without compromising their own well-being and productivity. 3. Dealing with bad bosses. In this chapter the book focuses on how to deal with bad bosses. Erickson suggests that employees should take a proactive approach to managing their relationship with their boss. This could involve setting clear expectations, communicating effectively, and building trust. 4. Dealing with lazy employees. In this chapter, Erickson focuses on how to motivate lazy employees. He suggests that employees should set clear expectations, provide feedback, and recognize good performance. For instance, setting specific goals and deadlines can help lazy employees to understand what is expected of them, and motivate them to work towards achieving those goals. Another way to motivate lazy employees is to provide feedback on their work. This can include praising them for their successes, and providing constructive criticism for areas that need improvement. The point of this chapter is to help employees understand how to motivate their colleagues and create a more productive and supportive work environment. 5. Motivating lazy employees. In this chapter the book provides insight into how to motivate lazy employees. Erickson suggests that employees should focus on creating a work environment that encourages motivation and engagement. This could involve providing clear expectations, feedback, recognition, and opportunities for growth. 6. Creating a positive work culture. In the final chapter, Erickson discusses the importance of creating a positive work culture. He argues that leaders play a crucial role in creating such a culture by fostering collaboration, creativity, and respect. Leaders can encourage employees to work together on projects and recognize and reward good performance. Another way to create a positive work culture is to promote diversity and inclusivity in the workplace. This can involve hiring employees from different backgrounds and creating a supportive environment where everyone feels valued and included. 
The point of this chapter is to emphasize the importance of creating a positive work culture and to provide readers with practical ways to do so. Surrounded by bad bosses and lazy employees provides valuable insights into dealing with difficult situations at work. The book emphasizes the importance of identifying the characteristics of bad bosses and lazy employees, understanding their motivations, and taking proactive steps to manage these relationships. By implementing the strategies outlined in this book, you can navigate these challenging situations with greater ease and achieve success in your career. And that concludes our video on creating a positive work culture in the face of challenging workplace situations. I hope you found these tips and insights from surrounded by bad bosses and lazy employees helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel for more helpful content. And if you have any questions or additional tips you'd like to share, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.